I think the speed limits are to be too slow. I'm quite a dangerous driver, I tend to cut a lot of people up. I do use my phone when I'm driving. You are on that thin line between life and death, and the only thing in control of that really is you. You have changed the way I think about driving. I love tailgating people because I know they can see me in their mirror and it's making them feel interrogated and frustrated. People tell me to slow down and only speed up and I sometimes do uh, scary manoeuvres just to increase that adrenaline. I'm always beeping my horn and flashing my lights at people because sometimes it's just so cold you don't have like you don't have the energy to like put your window down and like scream at the person. The thing I most enjoy about driving has got to be just the feel of it, just being behind the wheel, the roads, the freedom. To be honest, I think if you're going to have a car and not speed, there's no point. 70 mile an hour on the motorway sometimes is just ridiculous. I want to do 200 mile an hour in a car by myself. 200 mile an hour club is the goal. When I do 120 miles per hour, I feel like I'm the fast and furious of a big, and it's just so fun. Drifting is the art of purposely throwing your car out of control and maintaining control. When you take a roundabout, you pull out, you kick the clutch, and you get it sideways. If you want to call yourself a good driver, you take that roundabout at 60. Drink driving is quite common uh, with my mates as well. They all drink drive. I used to do it quite a lot. When you go to house parties and you don't drink, it's a bit boring, so I used to drink a bit. But yeah, and I used to drive back home the same night as well. Less than four pints, I think it's okay to drive. But sometimes if I have like seven beers, I can drive totally safe. I'll be honest, I do use my phone when I'm driving. I need to make a snap, there's music. I need to know how I look as well. When I'm driving, the sound system on my car is really loud. I feel like when you've got eyes, you don't need to listen to what's happening, really. I'm quite a dangerous driver. I tend to cut a lot of people up. I like the adrenaline, so I don't really care if I crash. Doing? I'm Greg and I just came in today to share my story with you. I was passenger in my friend's car. We both had a bit too much to drink. We gone to a race with another car. We came to the crest of a hill, went over at 90 miles per hour and uh, there was um, a car coming towards us and because you're going just too quick we couldn't turn away from the car. Both drivers dead instantly. Both were fathers of two, leaving four kids without dads. My family were told on two occasions that I wouldn't wake up and if I did, there would be nothing left of the Greg that they knew. I'm here today, but the pain and aggro that it put all my family through, my friends. All this could have been prevented. Have you ever uh, got in the car after a few drinks? Um, yeah, four or three is like the limit. You know, three drinks or whatever I am. Just about living proof that zero tolerance might be a solution. The law's there for a reason. Don't drink, drive. Look what happened. Having met you, um, you know, it's made me feel uh, like, you know, the zero limit is actually a, actually a good idea, definitely, uh, because it's, it's caused significant injuries, it's called deaths. I think I heard something about Snapchat. Yeah. And what were your reasons for that? Just making a pointless snap. It was just not 
It's not needed. Life is worth more than a Snapchat. You have impacted me. You've had changed my thoughts on drink driving and also just driving speeding as well. As you say, improve. Things can just happen no matter how good you are or how good your car is. Now I'm just going to drive home. I'm even supposed to be going out later and I'm going to drive my friend. So, like, there's just no need for the speed. At the end of the day, I'm going to get to the destination regardless.